you're so dug in ideologically that it would like twist your mind to admit, look, there's a law, it's a long distance from Eliezer Wheelock to Hitler. Colonizers create genocide. Why are you shouting? Don't hold on. All right, let's make this the last question in fairness, and I will have extended the time. Go for it. It's your the mic is yours. Why is it that the very descendants of the people that lived here before colonizers came in are the ones that are almost the most marginalized in this country and systematically suffering because of that? Yes. I I'll try to answer that as best I can. The condition of the American Indians, historically, we have to look at it twofold, historically and today. Historically, it was the Indian Wars, the broken treaties by the white man, the uh, wounded knee, the battles, the massacres. It was also a, a plethora of diseases that spread through the Indian population brought by the white man and that decimated the American Indian population. There's a book by, I recommend to you by the historian William McNeil, it's called Plagues and Peoples. It talks about how massive populations have been decimated historically by diseases brought by outsiders. For example, the Black Plague in Europe killed one third of the entire continent, brought from Asia unintentionally. Now I'm not gonna say that's genocide because genocide implies a deliberate intention to exterminate an entire population. That's why the use of the term genocide is very irresponsible on your part in this case. No, I don't Be think so though. You don't think so? No, I don't. You think that, you think, and, and, and I'm gonna ask you now for your evidence, that there was a conscious intention to wipe out the Indian, Indians as a people. So, Chapter and verse, let's hear it. So, what do you say about the, the very thing that this, this institution was initially founded on about essentially whitewashing the, the Native Americans? And then that was of course abandoned, but all of these things. But what do you say about like the, the foundational thing for, for Indian schools that were created and then there were things about headhunting Indians and prizes for that? Money, like it was a clear incentivization by both the U.S. government and just by people to be able to take over the property, well, you know, the, the land, the, the, the things that people had here before the colonizers came. So Eliezer Wheelock leaves Yale and comes up here into the woods of New Hampshire to set up a college to Christianize and educate the native Indians. Are you saying that he wanted to exterminate them? I think that that's a questionable, that's, it's based in something killed. So it has to do with, you know, understanding culture and whether or not you can actually, you know, help someone by Christianizing them. Right, but pause for a moment because, because see, part of, part of, education is making distinctions, right? Let's say I were to, let's say I believe as a Christian that your life would be infinitely better than it is if you became a Christian. And in that sincere belief, I read the Bible to you and I start proselytizing you. I'm not Adolf Hitler. You may not go for it. You may think that, uh, that I'm, I'm conning you, but you can't deny that my motivation is actually to save your immortal soul. And what I'm getting at is that for you then to say, this is genocide and not be able to even back off from that, even though we're looking at a very specific case where you know there's no evidence to support your position, but you're so dug in ideologically that it would like twist your mind to admit, look, there's a it's a long distance from Eliezer Wheelock to Hitler.